Welcome, I'm Tom Jones. I hope you'll stay with me. This is a free art lesson just for you. I'm going to show you a very simple way of creating a moon. But first of all, let me ask you a question. What do you think this is? I know most of you would say it's a product that you can buy in kitchen stores so that you can measure pasta when you're cooking. You might be wrong. It's actually a moon maker, and I'm going to show you why. If you can look closely at this particular scene, I did this scene earlier, but this happens to be a northern scene with a tall mountain in the distance, a couple of uh, other closer mountains in the distance with some dark blues and greens in it. And I also left some sky area for you. I did that on purpose because I want to show you a simple way of creating a moon if you want to put a moon in the sky. All you need to do is to have something similar to this. Uh, you can buy something possibly in the uh, drafting store. Uh, art stores have these uh, little protractors and so forth with all the different sizes. But this happens to be one that's a pasta maker that I got somewhere uh, in a, um, a kitchen store. It has different size circles as you can see. And what we're doing here is that we want to make sure that we don't use a circle that's too small or one that's too large. I find that this particular circle right here works for me. It's about the size of maybe a 50 cent piece, if you, can, if you know what size that is, a coin. So anyway, I'm going to use that size, but watch what I do. In addition to this, I also have a toothbrush, some water, and I also have some tissues handy. So I have basically four items. This particular device, my toothbrush, water, and tissues, watch what I do. I place it wherever I want it in the sky. And it's important now to make sure that you hold this close to the paper. So hold it down firmly. The other thing you want to remember to do is when you use your toothbrush, dip it in water, and then get any excess water out of it. You don't want it dripping wet. The reason for that, if you have too much water going on your particular paper, some of that water may run underneath the edge. It'll create an irregular look. So let's go ahead and give it a try. I'm going to take the toothbrush and wet it. Another thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to use the toothbrush in a circular motion inside this circle. But I want to rem remember to do one important thing. On part of the moon's edge, I want a hard edge. On part of the moon's edge, I want a soft edge. If you have a hard edge all the way around the circle, it looks a little hokey. It looks like you got one of those little white stickers from the uh, office supply store and stuck it onto your painting. So have part of the edge a little soft. It looks more realistic. So let's go for it. I'm going to take my toothbrush and I'm going to go ahead and just very gently, the tapping you hear is me getting the excess water off of my toothbrush and I'm just going to just in a circular motion go ahead and lift out some of that color. Now I'm going to take my tissue and blot that area. Now I would suggest to you that it's best not to overdo it. Don't go in and overdo this. Watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to lift this area off and all of a sudden you've got a moon that looks very realistic. It's just that simple. Just a review. Make sure that you use the right size. Make sure that it's somewhere around the size of a 50 cent piece in your, for your painting. Number two, you'll need a good clean toothbrush, clean water, and tissues. Hold this particular device very carefully and very firmly on your paper. Wet your toothbrush but get rid of the excess water. Then come over and use it in a circular motion and have tissues ready to pick up the particular area that has been moistened. Don't overdo it. Don't lift out too much color. It looks more natural just to have a faint moon there. I hope you have a lot of fun with this. I do this in a lot of my paintings. It adds a little more excitement to your paintings rather than just having a typical uh, nonchalant sky with, uh, that you see every day in every painting. It adds a little more life to your scene. I hope you've enjoyed this particular demonstration. Thanks for joining me. My name is Tom Jones, and I hope to see you real soon. Thanks.